I'm just waiting for the question because I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it. Okay. Tracy, I'm going to do it. 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 i am going to this is actually the last meeting of the committee in this format um, under the new council. Um, it'll be reformed, I imagine, in some form. Um, I'll open the karakia. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa whona mo te moana, he huara i mātau te i te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou i a tātou katoa. So, um, we have apologies today from Georgina and um, Aaron, Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins, Georgina Conley and Councillor Aaron Wilson Collins, and we have Councillor Delavaris Woodcock um, joining us online today. Um, so, can I? Um, I'll move that those apologies be accepted. Yep. And um, Mike Howard seconding that. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Okay. So you've got the agenda in front of you. Are there any issues that um, we should be aware of that would affect the order of the agenda? No? Okay, I'll confirm that the agenda be accepted as it is. Can I have a seconder, please? Um, thank you, Morris. Morris, seconding. Um, all in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Is there a um, some changes to the What I tried to get is like, um, is there a corporate password or something? I'm coast in the small meters. Right. The password for ABC guest, yeah. which should still operate. Yeah, same the encrypted network track is a bunch of Just accept it as trusted on speciality. Are you able to continue without internet connection? Hold on. Okay, I'll just call for any conflicts of interest while um, the technical issue is being sorted out. Are there any conflicts of interest that anyone would like to declare? We can always declare them at the time when we get there, so we'll move on. Um, so we'll now move to the confirmation of the minutes from our meeting on the 30th of June. You have those minutes in front of you. Um, can I have a, a mover and a seconder to um, note those meetings? Is there any issues? But, um, of matter of fact. Well, Thank you. Um, Morris moving the Morris minutes moves. and Mike seconding. Any issues with the minutes? No? Okay, we'll put those to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, against? Carried. Okay, so we'll move now to the business of the meeting. Um, starting with item number four, the operations update, and this is going to be presented by Lara, who's online. Lara, Lara. Who's online. Excellent. Welcome, Lara. Um, Hello. Good morning. I'll just get a paper in a seconder to get this on the table, and then we'll hand over to you. Um, can I have a, a mover for um, noting the operations update? Yep. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And a seconder. Thank you, Morris. Right, over to Lara um, to present your report. <coughs> Morning everyone, I hope you can hear me well. I apologise I am not well today, um, but I will take the report as read. Um, I just want to highlight probably the um, two, um, well, three biggest things probably I've got on there for discussion, which is the ongoing weed control. Um, I just want to highlight that we have um, got it included in the contract review that's coming up 
<laughs> um, so we are just waiting for to see if we can get that included on a routine maintenance through council um, for the um, Southern Bank, which is on the map as A. Um, and then once we get the work done in uh, B, uh, section B, I've got up there that's just below the um, Bowles car park. Excuse me. Then I'll, um, we've also got that going in for maintenance. Uh, the water supply, um, which is for the water fountains, uh, we have got legal advice on that in regards to um, the liability that council will take on if uh, we were to support the trust taking on supplying water for uh, drinking purposes. Um, that is seen as too high risk and council won't be um, looking at supporting that. Um, regardless of whether um, they become registered water suppliers or not. Um, and that comes under just um, the Water Services Act and the Health and Safety Work Act as well. Um, we will still continue to support them um, as best as we can in regards to their other water needs um, for plantings and whatnot. Um, also really wanted to highlight um, in terms of Budget, there is no specific budget for the Mungafai Community Park, even though it's such a large park. Um, the costs from that do come out of our operational expenditure for all of the Mungafai Parks and Reserves. Um, we have forecasted um, taking away all the routine works that are already um, to come um, and the day works that we've got planned for the uh, Mungafai area going forward. Um, and also that increase of the level of service that we want to see in our new contract. Um, and that only leaves us with a, a about a $54,000 um, operational budget for the entire Mangafai area. So um, we are learning, to, well not learning, we are still continuing to um, you know, make the best um, out of that space. So it's just a lot of um, making sure that we're forecasting and planning really well. Um, so yeah, we do have a little bit of um, money out of the implementation master plan. <clears throat> um, that is already plan for planned works, which was the um, planting of the car park Eastern Bank, or what we call the mound, um, which is kind of near where the um, cafe is, as, long, uh, as well as some of that um, continued weed control. Um, yeah. Any questions? Um, yes, Lara, good morning. It's Mike here. Yes, Mike, go um, ahead. Sorry, Madam Chair. Um, I do have a, just a query, and it, it's more as background. $54,000 yes. we've got, as you say, for all recreational areas in, in this area. Can you give us a brief pricey of, of, you know, how many entities we've got to cover with that and and where you're looking at spending that money uh, at this stage? Okay, so all the parks and reserves in the Mungafai area, so that's, um, and that's including coastal structures that are in that area. So, um, you know, the likes of Sellers Ave or um, Robert Street Reserve, any of those esplanades um, that run around um, the Mungafai sort of harbour space, um, the pocket parks, um, such as is in Wood Street um, by the um, shops. Um, so there's quite a few areas. Um, I know that we do have some planned works for Sellers Reserve um, in regards to um, the noxious weeds, um, including also some of the esplanade works that we're trying to um, get rid of as much of the noxious weed we got in there, but it's it's with the new contract coming in, we're also looking at um, utilising our contractors to um, take on some of this stuff as well as a routine job. So it's not a big cost in a um, one-off sort of like, let's attack this place, but to keep it going once we have done that. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few parks, reserves, esplanades, um, and as I said, there's also coastal structures. So we've got 16 coastal structures down Lincoln Street um, that we're also looking at and getting some assessments done on. So yeah, there's a lot of asset to take care of in that space. But as I said, um, some of these works are already 
um, forecasted for. So we've already looked at taking those um, costs. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I've just got a follow on question from for, on, on that, Lara. Do we do we actually know? I'm, I'm just going to talk about the community park here because um, yeah. that's that's what we're focused on. But do we have an idea on how much money we actually need each year to maintain the park and keep it at a reasonable standard? So obviously there are remedial works that are needed in order to bring it to a standard and then we need yeah. to make is yeah. So we've got uh, three tenders currently pricing all of this um, for our current contract um, or the contract renewal, sorry, not the current one. Um, so that should be coming through in the next couple of weeks. I, we don't have that information yet, but we did put it in so that we could get it all priced out um, for those particular ones. I have spoken to um, Jenny um, and the internal operations team that we're not going to be clearing any more spaces until we've actually um, got the ability to maintain what we've currently cleared. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just so that we're not um, overburdening um, our budget um, and I suppose increasing expectations in the wider community that we can take on this stuff just yet until we actually know what it's going to cost council going forward. Is it possible for that work to be brought to the next meeting whenever it is of this? Committee, uh, I think it would be really helpful for this committee to know where we are with all of that because we have traditionally had the hundred thousand a year, yeah. which yeah. actually hasn't covered what we need to do. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be really helpful for that. Thank you. Yes, and, and to get something down specific yeah. relative to the post. Yes. So, uh, so we know what we can do and what we can't do when um, we come up, up against these things. I um I have another question, but I see that Victoria, uh, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock has a question. Has her hand raised? So, um, would you like to go ahead, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Um, so following on this line of discussion, uh, my question for Lara and Jenny uh, is. Is it possible to continue the work that the Department of Corrections has done uh, with with regular weed clearance of these other pocket parks that are burdensome for us to uh, oh, maintain? Yes, no, 100%. We, um, they have a number of different not-for-profit um, organisations, community groups that they do work for. Um, at the moment, we've just got them focusing on the Mungafai Community Park because of the um, already um, agreed planting that's been um, is currently underway. But yes, Jenny and I have spoken about um, seeing what we can um, talk with them about in regards to uh, the district. I have briefly spoken with Nairi Brown, who's the um, operations manager, I believe, for corrections about coming up with some, some sort of agreement and plan for some of these, um, especially in terms of clearing noxious weeds and stuff, because it's quite a bit of work there. That sounds really good. Thank you. That's my question, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I have a, another question just around the um, the water question. Um, is it is that something that we could roll into? Say, I'm, I'm thinking about the toilet cleaning contract that they clean the toilets and test the water at the same time, or is no, it a different totally skill different set? Department. Right. Yeah. So it is. So it's an it's an it's a solid extra cost on the right pay. It's a huge so, cost for the amount of testing. Yeah. Right, and the risk because there's so many people yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I understand that. It's just it seems really unfortunate that we've yeah. got all these water fountains everywhere that we're now no longer able to. We are willing to um, like because with um, Tomata Arawai and and with that space, you know, evolving and and whatnot. Um, we will keep an eye on on that, and if anything changes, we will definitely work in with Mayors if that's if that allows. Um, but yeah, at this stage, there's just too much risk um, for council to be, take on. Would it be worth actually sending a, a letter to yeah. Tamata and yeah. going, "This is this is an we issue. Have. You know, we we've yeah. got all these community yeah. water fountains. You have great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the 
just in terms of developments from last week, so um, we're working at the moment with Anne, the GM of infrastructure, yep. and he will be sending out a formal letter to all the community groups at Langfai Community Park, um, outlining the, re the reasons why that we won't be going ahead with any um, water supply um, and what the liability is from the organisations and also from council's liability as well. So just a clear message to everybody, so it's blanketly um, Understand that. Right. Councillor Delavaris, we've got a question. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So, following on this line of discussion, I was wondering, Lara and Jenny, uh, are there drinking water supply objectives and policies in open spaces from the Ministry of Health, for example, that we would be um, that are counter a contra to the direction from Taumata Arohai, and how would we resolve that that conflict if we're not meeting other policy objectives that come from another ministry, for example? Not to that, supply um, water. So, sorry, um, I don't believe there is. But what I can do is um, take that question and probably get that um, checked better. Checked better. Sorry, my English is terrible today. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take that question back. If that's all right, and um, find a find a good sort of, um, answer for that. Thank, thank you, Lara. And I, I'm just thinking about you know this is a recreational area where people from the young to the old are exercising, and water is a fun, you know biological need. So uh, yeah, we we have communications going out um, through Facebook and different ways to um, just remind people to take their water bottles with them when they're going out and um, and I do know the cafe supplies water um, through water bottles I believe is that right Jenny yes. Yes. Yeah. so the yeah. cafe is supporting that space <coughs> as well yes um, and that also ties in because we have to consider all factors to the government directive to raise the cost of waste to landfill. So we need to yes. make sure that the unintended consequences of one action don't create problems um, in terms of raised costs for our um, our license to occupy yes. not yes. profit organisations. So I I would Council like to your 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 question, please. Would it be possible? to when you're addressing, when Anin is addressing Taumata Arawai and uh, in, in, in their correspondence to signal that there are wider issues that the government should be aware of when they are enforcing uh, water restriction issues or, or liability <laughs> issues, that it would be productive for our local government and central government to find a solution. Is it possible to um, for the staff to address those concerns in their correspondence to Tomata Arawai? Thank you. Okay. I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Madam Chair, just. Mike, you have another question? If, if I may, um, just following on from that, really, Lara, and, and to the council, I, I guess. Um, some of you won't know that we had a, uh, a fairly uh, robust discussion on the subject at the uh, Friends of Mangawai Park meeting last week. So I'd be very, I'd be very interested and keen to ensure that the communication that does come out from council is, you know, clear, robust, and not smacking of bureaucracy over 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 bureaucracy getting in the way. Um, I think that, you know, we've got to try and make people understand that we're not, as KDC, um, putting in these restrictions. Yeah. Um, and uh, that we're working as much as we can to find the right solution. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the purpose of yep. our team. And, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay, are there any further questions on the Ops report? Okay, so any um, any statements? Um, sorry, Tracy, you'll have to remind me who the mover and the seconder were. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Mike, as the mover, you get the first statement. Yeah. Um, okay. Morris. Um, 
I'll open it up to any other statements. No, OK, we'll put that to the vote then. All of those in favour of noting this report, please say aye. 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 And against, carried. OK, so we'll move on now to the um, second of the reports, and that's from the project team. Um, can I have a mover to get this on the table, please? Yeah. Uh, Morris and seconded to Mike. Thank you. Um, so, Jenny, if you'd like to um, present your report, please. Take my mask down. I'll speak a bit quietly. Um, good, everybody. Um, I take it that my report has been read. Um, and maybe if there's any questions, I guess the highlight of, of something that's kind of transpired since I wrote my report is that Maz, the um, Mass report went to council last Wednesday and the funding was approved for them to um, be able to complete the escape park, escape park improvements. So um, that wasn't finalised when this, this report went through. I think a lot of what um, has been discussed already through La Lara's work that Lara's doing and, and the work we do with the project team, which Lara's part of, has already been discussed. So, um, Another area that the Freedom's Group have actually also brought up is that they'd like to start looking at a um, unified branding of the park. So um, my colleague Gail Fotheringham and I will work with Mike and we're going to um, set up a meeting with the Freedom's Group to look at how we can have something that identifies that each of those entrances and each of the parts of the park actually are all one. Because I think a lot of people think Maz is the park or you know, mm. they don't realise that Golf Club and, and mm. Golf Club and Bethlehem's part of it. So that was something that came up in the Friends Group, two Friends Group meetings ago, um, and was really positive, positively received. So we'll work with Ben and Chiria Hub as well. And how we so yeah, I'm open to questions that you may um, may come out of my report that we haven't already discussed in ours. Great, okay, question. I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll kick off. <laughs> um, the wetland report um, that the, the, um, the cultural precinct really needs. Yes. Is there any movement on that? Because they, they, they think they're very confident that they need to see it before mm -hmm. any of them can make decisions. And there's quite a lot of tension that's building in that yes. discussion because of the slow progress. So I think that's something that Lara and I need to address really quickly. Um, uh, one of the staff members from Stella has said that she can meet with us to kind of go through it yeah. as well, and um, and also looking with working with NRC. Lara, if you want to come in on this as well, just in terms of how we interpret that. So would yeah. I be right in saying that we've got a report that yes. is quite technical? Yes. yes. And and it's the so what does that mean part that's missing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think really it's. In terms of the cultural precinct, the arts kind of precinct, um, it's really it will really be the dairy that, that is impacted on any, any of the wetland. Um, That's the team in the arts agreed to move. <laughs> yeah, their building's not anywhere near right the size. So okay. that's, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the arts building, wherever it is, would be fine. Would be it fine. Would be the daring if it moves, that it has a problem. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you do you have like a time frame on when you might be able to get that summarised? It's kind of high on my priority this week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay. So so then, Peter, if I may just clarify, Jenny, um, that will definitely be with us by the time we have that next meeting. Definitely. Cool. Great. Okay. Um, I have another question just around the information centre and kiosk. Um, there's the, the path is coming up there. Do we have like a design of how that all is all going to work with the kiosk and the path and the fact that a school bus apparently drops kids off there? And is that has work been done on that? Yeah, so I checked with Tim Manning, who's the project manager on that um, yeah. particular project. Um, what well, in terms of the crossover to the other side of Molesworth Drive, that was become obvious that that needs to change in terms of what was in the plan. Yeah. So they're working on that at the moment. There was nothing finalised that I could bring to the meeting today. Um, 
in terms of the bus stopping, nothing will change there. It's so they'll still be that car park still be exactly the same car park. The, 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 it's not intended to take up any of that road in space. Right. Um, and it will be a matter of working with the kiosk. The, the difficulty for us with the kiosk and the um, information centre is there's no form of lease or licence to occupy for either. Right. So, they, so historically how they got there, we're not quite sure. Um, <laughs> So, but we're needing to work with them in terms of what that would mean if they keep the kiosk there and how we work with them. And just for, and for clarif clarification, when we say the kiosk, we're just meaning the information, shelf that, information area, yeah, yeah, not the building. Not the not building. building. So, so the building could move. Yes. And they, um, and and they, are they happy with that idea? The group seem to be, um, to be, yeah, that's an area that they're looking at doing, but it's just that what they call the kiosk or yeah. what we would say is an information, information. Yeah, yeah. what that will look like and trying to um, work with them, not to spend too much money on any design elements or anything at the moment until we look at what the picture of the shared path and what will mm -hmm. need to get a roading licence if they were to stay in that area. So there's, there's a little bit of work that we're doing from the community team point of view with them. To, so you might do something yeah, to add Madam Chair, I, I, I just I'd like to add. I mean, I think that particularly with the the parking space that is there, and that's that is a permanent and things like that. Yes. Uh, I believe that we have to encourage. Sorry, I'll take that again. Encourage the information centre people. You know, it, it's a fantastic um, asset that we have to be able to have something that is functional, mm -hmm. which it isn't at the moment. And I think we need, just need to work with them to forget the idea of the kiosk where it is, particularly with the likelihood that the shared path will carry on down the left-hand side yes. of Molesworth. Now, that's a presumption on my part, I must admit, but that is a very logical thing. I think that there is a need for something like a kiosk at the start of the shared path going down the hill so we may need to work with them to get their thoughts on moving the concept that they have 50 metres south. And so it is there and it is irrelevant and, and it can map out all sorts of things. But, you know, I mean, I think we're all up in the air until we get absolute confirmation of where the path will go. Um, and that confirmation, that, that work is underway? And you know, okay, at the moment, yeah. All right. Well, we might we might sort of leave the officers to get on with yep, that, knowing yep, that yep. it is it is actually happening. That's good. And um, uh, that's all. Oh. Yeah, those are the questions I had. Mike, did you I do have I do do have one more, Madam Chair. Uh, just very quickly. So we're all clear. Um, we are coming to a situation with the Deering Trust, the museum, and with the um, arts, arts society about agreement or not on the location. And at the moment, we are waited. We are waiting for the artists' association. Um, some would say we've waited for 11 years. Um, I just want to be very clear from. KDC point of view, and I know that Jenny has spoken to me about this, but uh, absolutely clear from us where the artists stand vis a vis LTO. Okay, well, maybe that's LTD. a question for Jenny. What, what is their actual so, sort of contract, contracted okay. claim to that space? So the space that they've, that's been identified at the moment, that small area. So um, we work, we've worked extensively, as you know, with the museum to surrender a portion of their land for the area that yep. the artists have identified. So that area has been surrendered um, on the proviso that if the artists don't take it out within a certain period of time, that it will, be, that it will automatically go back to the museum yes, yes. as part of the licensed occupy. It doesn't come back to council, it goes back to them. So it's all been surveyed. So that we really only signed that off in the last three yes. months, and and then it's things have moved. Yeah. And um, the dairy museum and the artists are looking at the opportunity to kind of swap around. So whether dairy had wanted to go by the historic village, would potentially could let the artists go, and the dairy would would go where kind of on a different angle, but 
on part of the city's land and also part of the museum's land. So that you know that there'll be movement in Japan for crop fields and everything. So that came to light in the last two months um, and has made things quite different to, to what we had looked at. So but, it, but to be clear, the land is actually the museums. The yep. museum have the right to revoke that yep. um, formally in writing. And at any stage? At any stage. Okay. Yes. All right. That's, That's clear. Worth, yep. worth knowing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions on the project team update? No. Okay. Um, then, Morris, you want the mover. You get the first statement. Um. <clears throat> I guess in terms of the Stella um, master plan, some of the buildings are... Um, I'm, I'm sorry, we're just looking at the project team oh, update. Okay. No, no, we'll come, no, we'll come no. to the master plan yeah, yeah. next. No. Uh, no, no statement to make, Mike? No. Nothing? Any other statements from anybody? Um, I'll just uh, make a just short comment that I really appreciate the project team's work here. The statue is helping us to progress these ideas, whereas before they were a little bit in the vacuum. So that system is really working. So thank you for that. All right, we'll put this to the vote then. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Okay, so we'll move on now to the... Um, the Community Park Master Plan Implementation Plan. Can I have a mover and a seconder to get that on the table? I'm happy to move it. Anybody, um, think Councillor Delabarris Woodcock? Um, right, so we'll hand over to you, Mark, to um, introduce the report. So, <coughs> to provide you the draft implementation plan, to uh, have a look over and give feedback on. We took your feedback at uh, the previous meeting, and we've gone back and um, made some alterations and amendments to the um, implementation plan, and now we're representing it to you for adoption. Um, the master plan effectively forms like an addendum to the existing master plan, so you've got an existing master plan, and you can sort of amend it and tweak it as, as you go. And in this case, you're amending it to add an implementation plan, uh, which gives some sort of clearer concepts um, to show more clearly uh, to those working in the space and to the community the direction that we're heading in. Uh, in terms of once it's adopted, if, if you um, take the decision to adopt it, um, basically when you are asked to make a decision on the part you refer to the master plan and see to what extent it fits with the master plan, it's sort of a guiding document and Jenny, when she's Working with the community groups there, usually pointing to the master plan and saying what you're proposing, how it does it fit or how it could have fit with the master plan. So it's sort of a high level steer on the direction, saying to the community and those working in the park, this is where we want to be heading. Um, but at the same time, it's there's a degree of flexibility within that um, in terms of things can always be, things are ultimately always going to be brought back to this table for a decision. And it's, while you're referring to the master plan, you can if you, you, know, you can deviate from it statewide, and you can also need it um, as well if, you, if needed. But um, ultimately, it's about saying to the community and those working in the space, this is a shared view of where we're heading. Um, so this this essentially, I think in a nutshell, the implementation plan. Um, if you um, if you do require further amendments or extensive amendments to it, then um, we will have to come back to a further meeting. Um, which will be after the election sometime. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's basically what I have to say about that. So I'll ask Thank you. Questions. Questions? Morris. Um, I think we need to be clear. I'm not sure if this is coming off the last meeting, but the park is so easy to get this. We've got drawings for about 15% of that area. That was in previous talk about development uh, up, up beyond the um, up beyond the um, native tree, tree line um, up the top, and there's been some sort of resurveys done up there. I think we need to be clear and just sort of say that, you know, because you've got one swap left. So, um, in a sense, it was not a thing complete. So, as, as the park um, 
is kind of like grows as the more community groups come along. We really need to say something about um, there is more land up there. Um, it's 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 there is the potential to use it um, in some way once we know some more. So this this master plan, this, this this provision to the master plan is just touching the outside of the park. I think we need to be very clear that that's what it's saying. Yep. So, with, so what is what is essentially doing with the master plan is it's um it's really only taking maybe like a two year, if that, not even maybe two years now. Um, you want things, so it's sort of it's sort of plugging an immediate need of um taking of making the master plan a bit more relevant to the current situation there. Um, in terms of going beyond that native going to that native bush space or what might the future of that be? Um, these are some bigger bigger discussions which we get into with the master plan review. Which is um, next item on our agenda. So the opportunity will be there, I suppose, to start to have those conversations with the community and start to work towards capturing that in a reviewed master plan. But in terms of like, this, this, um, this implementation plan, is really sort of focused on the immediate developments taking place and this next, um, what's the new now, about 18 months worth of, um, of life in this, really. So it's pretty, it's quite short in its focus. Um, and it's really focused around guidance for the areas where there's a lot going on at the moment and just sort of provide some clarity to, um, to the development which is really happening um, with quite a bit of pace. Um, and that, that further you know, looking looking at some of the opportunities in the, in the rest of the site is more um, so we'll get through the master plan. Um, if you just, um, would it be possible just to, for my norm from that picking up on, on Morris's point, would it be possible just to put an introductory paragraph in there? Well, well I think, I think that? I'm, I'm concerned that, that um, there'll be a lot more community groups wanting to locate in the park. And I think we need to make it clear, because we know this at the moment, that there is the potential of developing a land on top. So that, so that community groups don't feel there's still an opportunity to get into the park. I think we need to say that because we know that we, we know it is a possibility, but we're not saying it. I mean, so I don't think many people in Mangawai know that, that there is land up there that could potentially be used for community purposes. So just just on that, yeah. so you've got your master plan, yeah. okay, and then this is sort of going to bolt onto the back of it, okay. So the implementation plan is not the plan. Um, no, the no, the box. So if you were to get a community group to come and say, we would really like to establish up the top of the of the park, up in that area there, that um, that request to come into this table would be tested against the master plan. Master plan. And yeah. the master plan itself, I understand it's um, permissive or open to the idea um, of some developments in that area. It's had a, it had a big focus on um, identifying areas to protect, so identify things like I think it's the sandstone bluff that's through there, yeah. some particularly um, uh, sort of older um, parts of the forest um, through yeah. there, which are more established and more more native, um, and sort of directs where development can go. So that the um, so there are any requests to develop in the area would be coming to be tested against that, not just against this implementation plan, which is more focused on. Uh, yeah, I do get that, but where are we saying that, that further community groups still have an opportunity to, to get into the park? We seem to be closing it up. It's quite hard to deduce from, from the original no. master plan. I, 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 so if I'm just, would it, is it possible at this, I mean obviously anything's possible, would we be able to put an introductory page in here that says this is just a a current situation where things are at. That there is also the master plan, which is the grand plan. This is just a summary, and then there's also a review coming where all of those other questions can be. Yeah, with mean, with respect, in the next two years, um, and we've already done some survey work up here. It's been done by the previous committee, um, very, very preliminary, very exploratory. Mm -hmm. That information hasn't been shared with the community. In the next two years, if groups come along, um, they might want to yeah. explore that. I think if, if, if I can just jump in, the, the master plan does have some development in those areas already identified. Um, there, you know, there are 
what some call roads, other call others call tracks, two buildings that are more into the mm. forested part of the of the plan. So if you were to go to the master plan, you would see that there are opportunities there. But I think to go beyond what's in the master plan, my understanding is that the reform is what would help us to go before yeah. beyond what's in the master plan, because the master plan is the only plan that we have that's yes. been so so is that the intention here? That the master plan is there? Yep. This is just how do we tie it all together? The implementation plan is about tying it all together. And then the review will talk about whether we want to go beyond what's in the master plan in terms of making the space available. Effectively, yes, and particularly this master, uh, sorry, the implementation plan particularly is about giving a little more clarity to some of the areas where particularly we've got a lot of groups working together quite closely <coughs> and quite actively. So it's about giving clarity there. You know, whereas if another group was want to establish um, you know, an area of the park where there isn't a lot else going on, and the master plan obviously gives, speaks to that anyway, so they'll be going through that channel. This is sort of more tend to be working in the, um, a bit more detail. So the truth is, of course, if, if we had another group who wanted to go into that other area, to identify them in here, we need to probably have a, quite a bit more work done and understanding, you know, because that's... Whereas we've already got the master plan, which master plan highlights plan. certain areas, albeit not with any great detail, but it, it identifies them as a possibility. And then we've got the review, which would possibly open up more if that's what the community wanted. Open up more or close more as well. If we wanted to just go back to it and say, actually, we, we like this area being in bush. Yeah. We, while the original master plan did show development, we don't like that. And that's something else the community could say through that. The community could also say we want to open up more. Yeah. When you go to the review, you know, things are on the table, a lot more on the table. Yeah. Um, in terms of the current master plan, though, if the group is well established, so if a group came along tomorrow, as Morris has suggested, yeah. said we want to build a theatre, and we've had the idea put to us, a theatre, um, then we could go to the master plan and go, well, these are possible areas that you could already do it under the master plan, outside the area that's already been developed, but these are the two or three other areas of development which are already highlighted. Plan. And then they would they would make an application for development agreements and right. would start all of the research and, and how that fits in terms of whether it was able to and, um, and the friends would be involved with friends and yeah. governance, yeah. yeah. And then would also come yeah. to this table. Yeah. yeah. If if I may um, share I, to Morris's point, I I suspect that the one word in all of this is communication. Yeah. And and the implementation plan, most simplicity, is making sure that things that are underway get completed. Boom, that's it. We're going to go out to the community in the relatively near future. You know, we might all have, might have disagreements on how quickly that will be, but we're going to go out relatively quickly to ask the reviews and, and new inputs on the master plan. Yeah. I don't think it would hurt. Have council say, <coughs> you know, I, I, I release on the on the on the Mangwai Park community park and say, right, we've got this implementation, we're going to tidy up everything that's going on, and we will be coming to the community for new ideas, and so it's there in black and ink for everybody, and if, if you know, that would I think would clear it up, and um, you know we're excited. I know I can tell that Morris, you won't be aware of this, but uh, the friends. Again, uh, are starting already um, in, in the next meeting in four weeks. Just table their top line thoughts about what might be seen in a new master plan. Mm. That's last. Yeah, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the thrust of what Morris is trying to say here. I, 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 it's from a problem master plan, plan perspective, things seem a bit vague about future use. And I know we need to talk to the community about that, but I think we need to go out with some more specifics, like if there are identified areas of particular areas of bush that perhaps aren't up for grabs for development or whatever, we have that clearly marked. I went, up to, I went up to the top of the lookout a couple of days ago and had a look down, and, you know, Adjacent to the golf course, there is, you know, very modified areas with 
still with pines and sort of rough ground and stuff like that. And, and some of that is actually quite good contour. Um, I think we need to kind of, rather than going out openly, we need to kind of go, here's some areas for future development, here's some that probably aren't for future development, but mm. if you have uses for them, then you know, everything's kind of... Can we take that conversation into well, the well, conversation about the review? It's fine, yeah, but it, it, it all, it all yeah, relates it, it together. Does, it's, it's all quite tied together, but I think we, we need to sort of understand what this is, which is a sort of stopgap measure to try and help us tidy up the areas that have already been dealt to. Um, and then the review is the place where we say, is the master plan big enough, broad enough? What does it do? Um, and you know, and in the master plan, we've already got areas identified that uh, need to be protected. And so then we can have that conversation about everything else. What do you want? You know, what should, you know, should we open it up? You know, um, what sort of uses could we open it up for? But I, it, I'll be really interested to see um, how you the direction that you're taking with the um, with the consultation process is you know how do you and, and I think the friends are quite keen to be part of that process around what questions do we ask as opposed to just saying tell us anything you know, what are the triggers that we want to put into this conversation to get people thinking in, in the way that's going to be most useful to creating a, a revised master plan that works well. Uh, to uh, Council Larson's point, I certainly don't know, and I'd be dead keen to find out, has there ever been any area in the park established as a no-go zone? Yeah, there are in the master plan, there are some. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. No, well, I haven't gone through that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. Up with that. So that, that wouldn't, yeah. Okay, so with the implementation plan, given that maybe it needs a little intro paragraph, just so anyone who sees it, given that the next committee may not be you know, we, we may not all be on the next committee just to help people know this is really what it is. It's a, quite a contained little document, really. Um, I think that would be helpful. The other question I had was, I think I raised this at the last time we looked at it, the Mertz up area. I don't see that on here. So in terms of where they might locate in this? Or well, they, they, there is a specific area in the park that is the Mertz area. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I believe that, that that has been changed, at, at, at least in concept. They're not going to build anything on not it, but it's still it. an area that probably has some historic significance. Oh, there, that's right, and they're going to look at that, but they are talking about it with what they do with the Moose Hut is more in the historic village. I understand that, they, but it's that area, it's just... It, it would it's be awful if we kind of no, no, no. If, if we just kind of ignored that and then it became a car park is, and somebody then yeah, it, went, oh, wait. it is identified in the um, it was in the master plan though so yes. it's, it's in the master it plan. is yes yeah. so so we'll, we'll be bolting this obviously onto the back of the master plan so okay so if it's in the master plan maybe it doesn't need to be in here yeah, okay. it's, it's an addendum to it's not standard one okay Right. And we'll stand alone and we need to have quite a few more introductory paragraphs as far as no text at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, given that maybe we'll put an introductory paragraph just to describe it, are we happy to move to making a decision on this? Yep. Okay. Um, let's put that to, I don't think we need to amend the resolution to have the paragraph officers have got that, so we'll just move to the resolution, which is to, um, to what are we doing? So, I mean, we're not, we're yeah, approving it, aren't we? Adopting, adopting, adopting it. Yeah. Yes. So, um, all those in favour of adopting this implementation plan? Please say aye. 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 And against? That's carried. Great. Thank you. And we will move on now to the last item on the agenda, which is the master plan review. And um, can I have a mover to get this on the table? Mike, thank you. And a seconder. Morris, thank you. Right, so we'll hand over to you, Mark, to introduce your report, please. 
Yeah. So, because we're because we're about to go into local government elections, um, and in the inductions and setting up of um, new committees and so on, so that's why we're, we're making a decision now to look at a um, to begin a review of the master plan. Although it won't actually begin until over this coming summer period, when Manawatu operations spells and people are you know, people come back to Manawatu and we can engage with them and start asking them for their um, their thoughts on Manawatu Community Park. So Manawatu Community Park is not a reserve under the reserve state, so we don't have to follow all of the levels um, detail under um, Section 41. Um, which we're not quite grateful, but it does give us quite a good template um, within that process, which we're developing our reserve management plan um, to follow. So we're more or less going to follow, um, or proposing more or less to follow the process for our reserve management plan, um, well, even though we don't actually really have to. Um, we can have a bit of flexibility within that to do things the way that works in Mount Fly. <coughs> so essentially, this will, this will, this the proposal is to and take a review of, uh, of the master plan, ask the community for first people suggestions on what they think the park should be used for, what should go where, um, what the focus should be, and then start to pull that together into a draft, and then um, to go a lot of work with this committee and friends group and consultation. Build, build a draft and then go out and consult the community on that before that is then um, adopted. So that's um, in a nutshell really the, the process we're looking at um, at following. We haven't um, as yet started to put together like a detailed consult consultation plan for over the coming summer period. Uh, that's something which will wait for a decision on you first, but that's the direction you want to go in, that you want to um, take a review of the master plan, and then we'll start putting together a more detailed consultation plan to move that all out. Actually, the chair, I'll just add to that. Um, because the timetable doesn't allow for, um, and it's ongoing after the long term plan, after we develop the long term plan. So it's likely we'll, um, that, that staff are going to have to just put in some placeholders for what they think they know at that time, because it won't have gone through mm. the full consultation mm. for the long Because the um, information that's like to be needed for the long term plan will be about August 23, by the, August, September 23, by the time I start. Bring that together for the figures, and it's too late once you're yeah. using um, So, that, <coughs> if, if what I'm hearing is it's so the draft master plan is likely what's going to be directing into the LTP. Yes, that's yeah. right. And from what I've, I've looked at the LTP and um, money coming in provided in the future is not until no more on the part till 2025. Um, there's about 500,000 and then thereafter about 150,000 each year. Right. So that's what's showing in the plan at the moment for development. So there's very little you know, between now and 2025. So you, but you'll have a better through, idea yeah, through yeah. this process. Also, I suppose I'll just look at the around how, how detailed we have to be in our description of what we're going like If we allocate money to implementing the the last plan to develop in Manifold Community Park, how specifically to be exactly what we are, that money will be used for, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose, as well, and uh, how much clarity we have in the to a draft stage. If I might suggest the more clarity and granularity we yeah. have, the better, because yeah. the last few years, because we haven't had a lot of specificity, I would, um, uh, it's sort of, it sometimes feels like we're not entirely sure what's being spent on what. Yeah. And, so that's why I think having these plans is going to be really helpful. Um, but yeah, so the draft, the draft needs to be have a level of detail that perhaps yeah, um, yeah. deeper than the existing master plan. Yeah, the, the draft plan. You know, when you do this thing, the draft plan is um, essentially just the plan. By the time you get to the draft, you're just saying this is our plan. It's yeah. finished. We're happy with it. Yeah. If you receive no submissions, and that's it. That's yeah. 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 So. You know, some little details there. The only thing is that you might, through the submission process, get people putting their hand up and say, We all opposed to that. And we would just be pulling the money out of the LTP or the them something if, if we had put dollars against that particular project. So the focus is on by the draft, it is detailed, it's granular, it's budgetable, yeah. yep. and then that can contribute into the LTP. Yeah, and through the year. And that timetable would work out because. We always have a period where the draft goes out and there is consultation and people do 
pulled back or add things in. So, but it's getting it to that stage where you have it audited as the draft, which is um, is key. We can't change anything there, but then after the between the draft and the final, will be the opportunity. Okay. And uh, if I might just add a, a point, Madam Chair, the, my early days of this whole involvement would suggest that whilst we've put to the members of the, to the friends, I you know for them to contribute ideas about where they might need funding, and we've encouraged them to look at the park in total rather than yep. just the individual elements. There really hasn't been a lot forthcoming, no. right? And so I believe that we need to take the lead and, and be positive about and, and all encompassing and how we go and, yeah. and make sure that things that we think about that are important are covered at least as much as we can do is, is fr from a funding point of view. Other elements will come along, that's fine. And if I may, on that, um, there's talk already about you know, the library and what we're going to do and, and, and the possibility of a, a facility for council. Uh, I just wonder, is it, it's an advance of the process of the review of the master plan, but it's, it's almost like an elephant in the room mm -hmm. to some extent. I just wonder where that is it appropriate to actually have something out about, about a concept about that, um, you know, make it a little bit more concrete so that, you know, we've had it at the friends meetings that, oh, where does this come from? You know, yeah, yeah. what is happening? Um, should we so, be a little bit yeah, more so, transparent? So, through the chair, from what I understand, Gail Fondlington is going out at the end of September and going to be asking people where they want the library, which the choices are the village or um, the, the park. But my understanding is that, um, you know, we, that, that um, we have to put extra money in the plan for to purchase the land if we had to buy land, extra land at the village. Um, so I think that's, that, is that your understanding, Jenny? We're, good. Okay. We're discussing that tomorrow with the timetable in terms yeah. of um, when the consultation will start. It's, so in terms of the office, that hasn't been put in the plan and it may not need to be given that we already pay rental and depending on who was going to build it. But even if we were if if we were to build a building which um, last week at the council meeting, Councillor Weathy said, you know, parking on the bottom, library is the ground floor and um, office up top. We could look at. Um, we'd have to do work to compare the interest costs versus on on us on on the council building the second floor for the staff um, versus rental costs that we pay now in this building. So the costs are already in our plan. We would think it would be about the same <coughs> the same cost, but we have to test that. And it hasn't. So it hasn't come into the annual plan as yet. Okay. So so so. Then she, to, to that, so I think that that's fine. Except, what well, if we're going to go out with Gail and and ask the community where they want the library? I think that for full transparency, we should say, for instance, you know, we don't have any land that we own down here in in, in the village. The alternative is up to here in the park. We we own the land. And we could incorporate, you know, the library there, and and I mean, just provide them with that information rather than asking the community to give feedback on location, parochial feedback on on location without knowing all the facts. Yeah, we have we do through here. We do have like an implementation plan. We've marked out the yeah. potential yeah. library could yeah. build. Yeah. But again, community don't necessarily know that. No, but yeah. that would form part of the consultation. Yeah. So, so there's sort of two two things yeah, happening. Yeah. One is the library specific consultation, and then shortly after that will come the the park and the master plan review for the yeah. park. So there there's there's going to need to be some delicacy around how those yeah sort of interact those yeah. two processes. So yeah, through the chair. So I'm just thinking about um, what um, Mike Howard has said about um, the offices and bringing that in, how we bring that in because we need to. Note to people that we are looking that we're outgrowing yes. the offices here, yeah. 
and we are looking to um, put them adjacent to the library yes. as well. So it just needs to stay there, but it's not actually in our long-term plan. Yes. So, and we'll have to get it, because I'm thinking that the reality is we're going to have to probably get that into our annual plan for next year with the costings, because yes. it shouldn't be any different longer term, but, but yeah, people have to be aware of what's because happening. Because the library so. process will be underway. Yes, and yeah. so yeah. If you're so. going to be designing them together, then you're going to have to design them together. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, you have a question. But, Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, just hearing this discussion, I'm a little bit confused because last week uh, at Molesworth Drive, the discussion around accepting the Better Off funding package was uh, there was strong comments about the proposed library also being a community hub and not council offices. That was so. I'm a bit confused about that because I haven't heard the word community hub, but I have heard offices. And I was wondering about uh, if council is going to get a better chambers to make decisions, because I don't think the 1C Molesworth Drive uh, accommodation for public and elected members is at I'm all gonna try, I'm going to try and keep the conversation around this, which is the review plan process. Um, yes. What, what we can chair. note is that there is another process which is happening and for, for this committee, the important thing is that those two processes work well together. Um, our focus here is on the mass, on the master plan review for the park. Which, thank, you, yeah. thank you, Madam Chair. So I just point out that in the master plan uh, consultation process from December 22, uh, that if we are talking about the library positioned in the park, it must encompass the promise to the community that this new library would be also a community hub because that's what we were told it would be. And I also have another question while I have um, the floor, and that is how uh, will the master plan implementation in mid-24, if it all goes according to the uh, timeline, uh, work if part of the Mungafai Community Park has been transferred into ownership of water entity A. Thank you. I'm not I'm not sure that we can answer that question here. Um, this is about the process of the review. Um, so that would be a question for within the review, but we're just making a decision here about whether to start the review. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that that's a, a valid question for during the review, but right now, right here, we're just talking about initiating the process. Correct, uh, but it also might, perhaps it's it's the right time to feed in to the review that that is a question that remains live. Yeah, so that would be a question that would need to be teased out as part of the review, noted. Um, okay. Morris, you have a question? I was sorry to drag you off course again. Um, I would have thought that council offices um, might have struggled to be located in the park, given that it's never intended to have offices in it. <coughs> it's, not a, it's not a recreation. It's, it's uh, you know, I, I forget the wording in the, in the master plan. Yes, but it's yes clearly, it is, clearly it is a recreation space. Yeah. Clearly excludes council offices yeah. before you go too far down yeah. that track. Yeah. I so that, to get somebody to check. Um, yeah, but I think I think that's the point of the review yeah, yeah. is that we can ask those questions again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, that was because it's not because it's not a reserve. It can be used for any purpose. But the mass, the original master plan that's said right. only recreation. Yeah. But yeah. if we go back to the community and say, do you still want it to be only recreation, or what? If if not, what other facilities? Because there, you know, uh, certainly from the friends, there are questions about commercial activities. You know. Mm -hmm. Shops, cafes, that sort of thing, um, and yeah, you know, we've even had you know a, a daycare centre wanting to locate, which is effectively a commercial activity. So there's there's certainly an interest in broadening the use of the park, but that would need to go through the review process. We couldn't make that decision without talking to the community, I believe. Yeah. No, I mean, there has already been quite a lot of precedent of non-recreational activities in the very recent times with fire stations and ambulance stations and yeah. um, historic villages and 
community resource. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yes. So that, that that definition has evolved, and I think that that's certainly a good time to do a stock take with the community about what do they see the future looking like. And mm -hmm. through, through the chair, I think for the staff officers, they will have to be up in the heads because of um, civil emergency, yeah. because we want to be there to support the community, not down here. Um, yeah, like the, the last time that there was a lot of issues where staff felt they were hopeless because we were down um, on, but just up by the church there and, um, and, and weren't set up to help the community for the real event. So we need yeah. to be out there. So I think when we do go out to the library and we, if we do make mention, it need, it's so that it, we can coordinate um, civil defence and you're there with St John's and fire and ambulance, which makes sense. Okay. Thank you, sir. I, absolutely. It's, it's the extenuating circumstances potentially, and I think that it all comes down to how it is communicated when yeah. we go out yeah. and transfer. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, give them yeah. everything up yeah. front. Yeah. yeah, respect the community to understand what we're coming from. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so are there any other questions on this? On the on the um, a decision to proceed with the review of the master plan. No. Um, can we have some statements? And I think we were Morris and Mike again. Yes. So Mike and Morris this time. Okay. Mike, did you have a statement you'd like to make? No, I just thoroughly support okay. moving forward with the review. Mike Morris. Mike Morris. No questions. Uh, yes, I think it's about time uh, that we've reviewed the Mangafai Community Master Plan. It has been a long time since 2014. Thank you. And for Larson? Uh, right. so, yeah. yeah, and in fact, um, I'll just add to Councillor De La Barris's comment, by the time we adopt this, it will be 10 years since mm -hmm. we last adopted a plan so it is appropriate that we start this process now so i'm very much in favor of us getting underway but as we have discussed there are sensitivities and other things that need to be woven into this so that they they work together okay um so i'll put this to the vote that we direct staff to undertake a review of the Manify community park master plan all those in favor aye aye, aye. against Carried. Great. Look forward to that process. Um, so that brings us to the end of the business for the day. Nice short and sweet meeting. Um, and um, I'll close with the cutter here. Sorry, Mike. If, if I may, just, yeah. uh, Madam Chair, just one question and a directed at, at Morris. Um, and I missed this, I'm sorry, when you yeah. talked about the implementation plan. Um, at the last meeting, Morris raised concern about the look, some of the elements of the look of the, um, as per the old implementation plan. Um, I think that given that, we should ha have some comment on the proposed re working from still. I think given that we've already dealt with that matter yeah, yeah, and that yeah. Morris didn't raise anything right. at the time, yeah. I'm going to take it that Morris is comfortable with the... Okay, more comfortable with that. We'll okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thanks, I'll Mark. close the meeting now. Kia tāna mana ki naro, ki runa ki tēnā ki tēnā o tātou, ki a mahi a te hua ma ki kihi, Ke toi te kupu, toi te aroha, toi te reo Māori, tihe Māori ora. Thank you all very much for your...